be nice? Yeah. Hi everyone. Welcome to my first ever live stream painting demonstration. I'm a little nervous, but I'm sure once I start painting, I'll be right. First thing I want to do is check that everybody can hear us. Yeah? I can hear from this end. You can? I've got Dom here helping me with the technical stuff. Is everything working okay? Yeah, Dom's, Dom's here helping me with the technical stuff. Yeah? I'm here. Hi oh, hey everyone. I'm madly working behind the scenes and Louise is over here ahead of me, just over in this direction. I'm glad you owned your shirt. Yep, I had to look after you. <laughs> uh, okay, we'd love to know too where everybody's from. So let us know in the chat where you're from, where you're watching from. Today I'm going to paint a little fairy ring in watercolour. I think Dom's going to put that up. run through the supplies that I'll be using. My paper is Arsh cold pressed watercolour paper. I've stretched it and I've attached it to my gator board. It's 300 GSM in weight. Can you talk about the reference photo again? What about it? Just start from the beginning bit up. The sound wasn't on properly. The sound wasn't on properly? Yeah, just where you found the fairy rings. Is it working now? Yeah. Um, what did I mention? Just that they're Australian native wrens and they live down the back of our place near the forest. And I have difficulty photographing those wrens because they are never still. So the photo that I'm using is not the greatest, but it'll do for what I want today. So now I'll quickly run through the supplies that I'll be using. Did you get that? Everybody heard that paper? Yeah? All right, so brushes. This is my uh, Da Vinci Casaneo oval pointed wash brush that I use a lot. I'll be using this brush to paint the water onto the paper. I'll also use this Da Vinci Maestro Series 35 brush. This is a number eight. I'll do a lot of the work with this one. It's got a really lovely point, this particular one, as you can see, which allows me to put a lot of water and paint on the paper. And I can also use the fine tip to get into all the nooks and crannies that I need to get into. The other one I'll probably be using is this one, which is another Da Vinci Maestro. This is a number five, series 35. It's a bit smaller than the other one. And I'll use that on the beak and on the legs and on the eye and in a few other different places. Can I just say there's 312 people listening to you? Oh my goodness. You don't want me to be nervous, do you? Okay. Colours. I did a little sample colour swatch before I started. I'll be using burnt sienna. These are all Windsor and Newton colours. This one is French ultramarine. I'll mix these two together to make a grey. Uh, this is Van Dyke Brown. I'll use sepia as well. Some Payne's grey. And, of course, my Windsor Violet, which you know I love. And down the bottom, I'll be using some Pyrrhal Orange by Daniel Smith. I'll use that around the eye, on the beak and on the legs. 
All right. Uh, what else do I have to tell you about? The reference photo and the line drawing is on Patreon. So the link should be in the description of the video. We're recording this, so if you want to watch it now, watch as I paint and then paint later on, you can do that. I also have a hairdryer that I'm going to need to use when I paint. So Dom, I think, is going to try and mute the sound when I use the hairdryer. So just bear with me when I do that. It's just so that I can get the painting finished in the time that you're watching me. Um, the other thing I want to tell you too is that I'm not much of a talker when I paint. I find it difficult to paint and talk at the same time. I tend to get into my little painting zone and the words don't come out the way I want them to. So if I say any gobbledygook, don't more. Tell me I've just spoken strangely. To your live bloopers. <laughs> so what I might do is I'll stop from time to time and I'll answer some questions and then I'll start painting again. So if I go quiet while I'm painting, you know that I'm, I'm in the zone and I'm focusing on that. So now I've got rings in my eyes from the lights. Let's get started. Okay, I'm going to use this flat brush here to put some water on the paper. I've got clean water. Is the reference photo? Is now. Okay, thank you. All right, some water. I use a fair amount of water when I paint. As many of you probably know. Is my voice loud enough? Yes, fine. Yep. Okay, I'm taking the water out onto the background here because I want the paint to flow off onto the background as well. And I'd like to try and have a soft edge down here, down at this part of the rim. So when I put the, weight, the water on, see I was gonna say when I put the waiter on, when I put the waiter on, when I put the water on, I get rid of any puddles that are lying around. So if there's great puddles, you need to get rid of those before you put your paint on. I like to paint when there's a sheen on the surface, so while the water is still shiny. And I take my time when I put the water on, because it's just as, just as important as the paint. Okay. Just checking for puddles. That looks okay. I'm going to use some Van Dyke Brown. Fairly pale. I will build the colour up as I go. This is very scary with all of you watching me like this. Can you just repeat the paper? This is Arsh coal pressed watercolour paper. It's 300 GSM in weight. I think that's 140 pound. It's stretched. I have a video on how I stretch my watercolour paper. So here I'm going to drag it off onto the background. I keep the paint away from the edge of my water because I don't want a hard edge out here either. I want all the edges to be soft. 
So when I put the water on, I need to make sure that the water extends further than the paint and I keep the paint within those edges. Okay, so now I'll just put a little bit of water here on the back of the bird. I want to continue this colour over here, but I don't want any hard edges over here either. So a little bit of water will help me to keep the paint fluid. This is my number eight brush that I'm using. So now I'm going to form the outer edge of the bird. I'll just put a little bit more water down here so that I get a soft edge there too. What brush, brush size is this one? Number eight, Da Vinci Maestro, series 35. I like these ones because of their points. Got a really fine tip on them. Don't know if you can see my hand shaking. Relax, Louise, relax. We can't notice your hand shaking, it's fine. Okay, so now that I've got the brown on there, what I can do is paint in his little fluffy bottom down here. So I'm going to extend the water out past where my paint edges will go and that will ensure that my paint edges remain soft and fuzzy. down here too. Someone has asked, is this just a thin wash or a light wash? Yes, it's very pale. I will build on top of this. I try not to go too dark too quick. What I'm painting on at the moment is the lightest colour that I see on the reference photo. I look for the lightest colour and I try to match it as much as, as best I can. Okay. I sometimes use this flat brush here to sop up excess water, make sure there's no puddles. I've, pa I've painted around those little wing feathers. I haven't put any water on there. I'm going to mix some grey now from my burnt sienna and French ultramarine. I mix the two together, but I tend to put more French ultramarine into it. Louise, lots of people are offering you a glass of wine or bubbly <laughs> <That's> <laughs> to after. calm down. <laughs> That's after. It's too early for that. Okay, I've got the grey on my brush that I just mixed. I've dabbed my brush on a cloth so it's not sopping wet. My paper's wet and I've got water in the paint so I don't really need a lot of water in my brush as well. When I put the paint on, I don't want it to go everywhere. I just want it to give me little fuzzy edges, hopefully. Now, while you're doing that, can I um, tell you where some people are from? Yes, please do. We've got people from all over the world. We've got people from Ohio, Florida, Maine, London, Ontario, Canada, Wisconsin, Washington States. Wow. Uh, people saying, Dom, this was a great idea. Yes, it was. Yes, he's the one that made me do it. <laughs> We've got someone, hello, from Switzerland. Uh, Adelaide, oh. Washington State, Colorado, Ita Italy. Italy. Ciao, come stai, bene? Gee, they'd be um, 
That would be very late for the people in Italy. It would be very late. Uh, we've got people from Stony Plain, Alberta, and some places where it's midnight, so that must be the UK. We've got Miami, Florida, snowy Minnesota. It's beautiful and sunny and warm here. It's about 30 degrees. Wow. What, British so Columbia. 30 degrees what, here? Celsius. Oh, okay. Yeah, here. Yep, here. We've got um, Northern Virginia and Fairfax City, USA, Grand Rapids, Michigan, Maryland. Wow. Uh, Manassas, Vancouver, Idaho, Madrid, hola. Very exciting. And we've got Tennessee. We have Niagara Falls, Canada. Um, from Gold Canyon, Arizona, we've got Smoky Mountains of Tennessee, Toronto, we've got Muscouche near, or Muscouche near Montreal, we've got Florida, we've got Italy again, Wisconsin, we've got St. Louis, Missouri, near USA, Central Florida, Central Florida. Yeah. Oh my goodness, people are from everywhere, Louise. That's wonderful. South Dakota. Lily Bay. Okay. Can I um, turn my hair dryer on in a moment? Just want to tell them. So. Whenever you're ready. Okay. So I've wet, I've painted all of that in. As you can see, I've put my little fluffy bottom on. I've started to put that on. So now, before I can do anything else, I think I'd like to dry it off, and then I'll have a look at it again. I might need to rub out a few if. See if I can get rid of some of those pencil lines there. So I'm just going to turn my hairdryer on. Can you mute the sound so we don't annoy people? Okay, so I think that's dry. I've got a few little pencil lines here. I might see if I can get rid of those. Okay. Somebody just made the comment I love how your colours blend so well together. I'm still struggling a bit with wet on wet. I start to panic and have too much water or not enough. How do you balance that, Louise? How do I balance... How do I know whether I've got too much water on the paper? Is that what you're asking me? Either too much or not enough. Um, well, that, a lot of that comes with experience and practice. Um, you know, oh, it's, hard to, it's hard to explain. If, if you put the paint on the paper and the paint spreads everywhere and goes out of control, uh, you might have too much water on your paper. If you put your paint on the paper and the paint doesn't move, well then you probably haven't got enough water on the paper. Um, and you con I'm, when I paint, I'm constantly adjusting the water in my brush. So I might pick up the paint, put it on the paper, and then it doesn't do what I expected it to do. So it might be that this, my brush is too wet, so I'll quickly dab it on my cloth, and then I'll go again. So I think all of that, it just comes from using watercolour. It comes from experience. Um, yeah, and doing lots of tutorials. 
And we have a couple of latecomers. I'm just asking if you to go over the paint colours again. Um, using burnt sienna. These are Windsor and Newton colours. French ultramarine, Van Dyke brown, sepia, Payne's grey, Windsor violet, and Daniel Smith's Pyrrhal orange. If you go to Patreon, you will see that it's listed in a post that I did this morning. The link to that is in the description. Okay, now I'm going to paint the grey area that you can see on the white section of the rim. The other thing I might do is just soften this paint edge here. I'm just going to take my wet brush, there's nothing on it, just water. And I'm just going to rub over that edge there. The tissue. That just softened that edge a little bit so that it wasn't quite so hard. I'm just going to put a bit of water onto the white feathers where the grey paint will sit. I might take a bit of that water down onto the body of the bird. Uh, yes, the real challenge is for Louise to take a break to answer questions because you can't do both things at once. Who wrote that? Did somebody write that or did you just say that? Somebody wrote that. Yeah. It's from Goldfish Games. Yep. Okay, so I've wet the wet feathers, sorry, the wet feathers, I've wet the white feathers and I've taken the water down onto the body here. Remember I said I wanted a soft edge here? Just taking the water out into the background there. Grey paint again. So this is a mix of French ultramarine and burnt sienna mixed together. Um, someone's asked, when are you going to make I Love Louise de Massey watercolour t-shirts? <laughs> Watch this space because we've started a Teespring merchandise store which will be linked to YouTube very shortly. And Louise, is it easier to erase lines after you paint to avoid seeing the graphite? And I think I might know some of the answer to that, but do you want to explain it? Well, if you ever see me removing pencil lines after I've put the paint on. All I'm doing is removing the pencil lines that aren't covered in paint. Uh, when, when it's very pale like this, and I've only put a very light layer of paint on, I can sometimes get them off. But most of the time, um, once that paint goes on the paper, you're going to have trouble getting them off. So. Whenever I rub anything out, I'm usually just rubbing the lines that haven't been covered in, in paint. If that makes sense. And from what I've seen, whenever the lines stay there, you cover them with a dark paint. Yes, yes. If, if I've got a really ugly pencil line that I just can't get rid of, I may cover it with dark paint if it's in an area where I can put dark paint. If it's not, I sometimes use these little eradicator brushes and I'll rub over the pencil line with the wet brush, which will take it off, but it'll also take off a little bit of paint. And then I'll do a little bit of a patchwork. Like I'll fix it up with a bit more paint after that. But I usually try to make sure my pencil lines aren't too dark. So I've taken that grey from the white feathers down onto the body which has given me a hard edge here 
but I haven't taken it down here because I want a lost edge down there. I want that to blend into the background, which helps to stop making your painting or your subject look so flat. Um, it's only something I've just started doing. So I'm going to try and keep doing that because I quite, I'm quite happy with you know, the way it's working for me. Now I also have a question here about how do you get your waters to be so clean around the edges? My, the edges of my, here? Yep. Um, well, I think it's about you putting water further than, than you need. No, no, that's, no. no. When, um, I'm not sure whether they're asking about whether I get a dark edge or whether I get a clean edge. Well, how do you get water to stop so clean? How do I get water? You mean? I think it's the edges. It's just blend. Um, well, I'm not sure what you mean, but I'll just tell you what I think. The clean edges here, are just that's just brush control. Sometimes you might find that pigment pushes out to the edge of whatever it is you're painting and you get a dark edge down an edge and it looks untidy. What I do then, that happens to me too, especially if you're using a lot of water and a lot of paint. Um, what I do is I dry it off completely and then you saw me rub over here to soften this edge. If you do that, you'll take off a little bit of pigment and you'll get rid of your dark, dark line here. I think I did that in one of my YouTube videos recently. Uh, I can't remember which one it was. Um, and a water line out here, if, if I put my water on and then I had a water line out here, that would be because I used dirty water. So make sure your water's clean. So I hope that answers the question. Does it answer the question? I think so. Someone has asked, um, have you taught me to paint yet? No. <laughs> no, I haven't. But he's taught, he talks about it sometimes. Don't you? Okay, now what do I want? I can paint houses. So you can paint houses. Um, I want to darken this area here. If you have a look at the reference photo, it's a bit darker here. And the dark feathers run along here. So I'm just going to put a bit of water there now. Take the water down further than I want it, but I keep it within my paint line there. Again, I make sure that there's no great puddles of water lying anywhere. And there's not. So now I can pick up some more Van Dyke Brown and I'll give it another layer. So I've got Van Dyke Brown on my brush. If I put it on and I think it's too dark, I can take the paint out of my brush and spread it around. Sometimes I put it on and I'm a bit heavy handed. So then I just quickly take the paint out of my brush and spread the paint around on the paper. If a person doesn't have pyrrole orange, orange, will a normal orange? Yes, any orange. doesn't have to be pyrrole orange. You can even mix red and yellow together. I'll be putting a little bit of burnt sienna with it, I think, for the around the eye area. Okay, I'm going to paint the wing feathers separately. I took the liberty of painting the tail feathers, feathers in yesterday because I wanted to try and get it finished pretty much in the time. You know, I don't want to have to not finish it for you. I'll, sh I'll tell you what I did with those later on. So remind me if I forget. Okay, so I've darkened that area now and now you can see that I've got a darker back area to the top of the bird, which is the way it is on the reference photo. 
I'm going to put a little bit of colour at the front here. You can see it's a bit darker there on the reference photo. So I'll wet that area too. I'll switch to my number five Da Vinci Maestro now. Louise, can you say here again, please? Here. Yeah. Here. Yeah, it really loves the way you say here. <laughs> here. Oops. Okay. Sometimes too, when I pick my paint up, I'll give it. I'll bring my. Can I bring my palette over? I'll give it a little twirl like that to get my point back which gives me my point um, I hope that hasn't gone dry now that I've been doing all that talking no it's still wet if you find you put the paint on the paper and your paper's started to dry and that's not what you want, just get a bit more water quickly. Soften your edges. I'll probably come back and fiddle with that area later, knowing me. All right. Um, I think that's no, it's still, still wet. Okay, so I might move over onto the wings, the flight feathers, because I want to do a bit more work down here, but it's still wet. So the wing feathers I can pretty much paint on dry paper, I'm thinking. So I've got Van Dyke Brown again. I think that, oh no, that's still wet there too. So we'll go Louise, over here. Will you paint some landscapes in the future? Uh, I'll no, I won't say never. I'm not really a landscape painter. I'll be honest, I'm not. I'd like to learn because, you know, it's just something I could teach people. But I've never ever been drawn to them myself personally, as, as a subject to paint. And I think you've got to have, um, you've got to love the subject that you're painting. But I never thought I'd be doing live stream on YouTube either, and I am. Judy asks, sometimes I create blooms when I don't want them. What's the best way to correct an unwanted bloom? Uh, wait till it's dry, completely dry, and then re-wet that area with water. And just gently use your brush to try and remove it and spread the pigment around a bit. And what pencils do you use? I'm not sure if that's the full question or it was it um, what do you use pencils for? Pencils? The graphite? Is that what they're asking? Didn't, didn't elaborate. I use, um, usually use HB pencils um, to get the drawing on here is an HB pencil, graphite pencil usually. I also use um, the mechanical pencils to, I might use it around the edge of the eye or something like that to just tidy the shape of it up. Um, just trying to work around the wet paper. And what was that small Scrub out brush brand. Uh, I think it's Eradicator brush. Yeah, it's a Rosemary and Co. Eradicator brush. I think they're in the UK. I'll show you it again. Rosemary and Co. Eradicator brush. Can you see that? They're very handy. They um, 
I use them quite a lot. Okay. I'm just Are you using watered down paint or straight off the top of your tray? At the moment, I'm using this here. So it's a bit of water in it. I might just put some colour over all of these all at once here. Is there anybody painting with me at the same time? Okay, I'm going to dry it off again now. So Dom's going to, to mute it for me. We've got sound back on? Yep. Okay, sorry about that, guys. Can you just say how many layers you generally do? Your work is always fresh looking, so they're assuming two to three? Um, yeah, I try not to do too many because it can look, start looking a bit flat. You want the paper to glow through the paint if you can. I always try to make sure that... Um, there's a bit of light coming through the paint. So it depends what I'm painting and how quickly I can get to where I need to get. Um, yeah, there's probably three or four layers usually. Maybe not that many sometimes. Okay, um, I'm just gonna jump up here to this area around the eye. There's the little eye, but there's also an area of white paper that I have to leave right next to the eye. I hope people can see that. So when I put the water on, uh, I don't, probably don't even need water here, but I'll put it anyway. I'll put it on anyway, because it's hot. I won't put the water around that. I won't put any water on that little white section is what I'm trying to say. I told you I can't talk. Here I'm going to use Pyrrhal Orange, but I'm going to put a little bit of burnt sienna. This is Pyrrhal Orange. I'll put a little bit of burnt sienna in it just to take that brightness away. Someone said we have a thousand birds in our backyard alone. Is that true? In our backyard? Yeah. Oh, there's plenty. There's lots and lots. Because we border on the, uh, on a state forest. Borders our property, so we get a lot of, we get a lot of birds, don't we? We sure do. They're beautiful. I love them. I'm just picking up a bit of water on my brush because the paper's drying. So I'm using a wet brush to spread that paint out now. Somebody asked about tracing pencils. What do you use to trace? Um, what do I use? Usually the window. I'll show you. 
I'll show them. Can you show them that drawing? Sorry if the camera's shaking, Dom's moving. We've got timber floors here and they shake. Um, with this one, I drew my little drawing and then I traced it onto this tracing paper. I traced it on through the window. I just put it up to the window. Then I rubbed an HB graphite pencil on the back of it. And then I put it on my paper, taped it into position, and then just used another graphite pencil to draw over my pencil or draw over the lines, which got the drawing on the paper for me. I hope that answers that question. Okay. Um, I might come down here onto this area. Just for interest and because I know it looks pretty and because I'll be using it down here and over here, I'm going to put a bit of Windsor Violet over that grey. Not very dark. Okay. Um, now what I'll do is bring in this area along here. I think it's darker on the reference photo. I'll wet it. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is put the paint on and I'm going to drag the paint into the dry area which will give me those jagged edges of the feathers that you see. I think I'll use my grey here. I don't want it to be too dark. I can always add another layer if I need to. So this is grey, French ultramarine mixed with burnt sienna. Louise, how long do your 35 series brushes generally keep for? Uh, keep their point for, sorry. I've been using these ones for about five years now. I did buy a few new ones recently because the smaller ones tend to wear out before the, the larger ones. But um, yeah, I've been using, using, using them for about five years. I've still got them, I still use them. And they get a lot of use as well. So you can see I'm pulling that paint onto the dry paper to get those jagged edges there. I'll do the same thing here. So what I'm looking at when I paint, I'm looking at this edge here. I'm trying to get the little feather edges. Millie has asked, what's your favorite palette to use? And Mel has asked after that, do you clean your palette after every painting? No, no, I don't, I'll, I'll talk about that in a sec. Just dropped a little bit of Windsor Violet in there, just again to add interest and because that's just what I like to do. Just makes the grey look a bit more interesting. Okay. Now, this looks a bit of a mess here. Let me see if I can fix that up.
Um, for those of you who are on Skillshare, I am doing another class on Skillshare. This year I'll try to get two done at least. Um, I've just done a study of one, which I'll be putting on in, well, I'm hoping to get it on um, early this year if I can. Do you want to explain that they take so much longer than your Patreon ones? Um, yeah, they do. They take, Skillshare classes take me a lot longer to produce because I, you know, I have to make extra videos and I have to break the videos up and I have to make a trailer and things like that. Okay, now what am I going to do? Let me look. All right, I might get some colour on this little feather at the back here, at the back of the tail. I'll use Van Dyke Brown and I'll paint it on dry paper. It's got hard edges all the way around. I don't need to paint it on wet paper. But I might just pull a bit of that colour into there to break it up. My smaller brush should be better there. Okay, let's see if I can get the eye on. I think that's dry. For the eye, I'm going to use sepia. I'll paint that on dry paper. And I'll leave a little white edge. I'll also try to leave a little white highlight. I could have masked that off. But I find it just as easy to paint around it. See how I can hold this brush up right up on its tip and it gives me um, lots of paint but I can get into really tiny little nooks and crannies with it. That needs to dry before I do any more. The beak I usually paint the beak, I do the top beak and then I do the bottom beak. I don't paint it all at once, usually. So I'll wet that with a bit of water, the top beak. I'll use my grey French ultramarine mixed with burnt sienna. I'll bring in the top edge. And I'll put a bit more of the Pyrrhal Orange mixed with the Burnt Sienna. There. I'll have to let that dry before I do the bottom bank. Right. Just put a bit more colour here. This is grey again. French Ultramarine Burnt Sienna. Questions? Um, Helen was asked, are you not using your round rotatable palette? Oh, sorry. Somebody asked me about palettes, didn't they? They did. Um, yes, I am. I still use it. Um, I find it a bit big sometimes. Um, what I like about it is that it's, it's got those sloping wells and it's on a rotatable Lazy Susan, so I can get to the paint. So I do use it when I'm painting. Um, lately, I've been using this one here. I think it's a John Pike um, palette, which I quite like. I don't wash it after I've used it because um, sometimes I might want to use the dry paint. So this this puddle of paint here has dried, which is this colour here, which I think is Antwerp blue. So if I'm painting and I want dark colour, I can wipe my brush in here where the paint is. But if I want just a tiny bit of colour on the tip of my brush, I can wipe my wet brush 
on this dry paint and get a little bit of colour. I find with the round palette, it doesn't have a big enough area for me to do that. So that's why I've been using this one a bit more. Just need a drink. Someone joined from, from India, it's 5.30 a.m. there. Um, someone's asked, I have trouble with pencil line showing. Do you want to explain that little bit? Um, yeah, you've got to make sure that they're really pale. So only you can just, just see them. Um, once the paint goes on, you can't really remove them. I think that's still wet. I can't really show you. It's too wet. I was just going to rub over there and show you that I'm not going to be able to get that off, probably, because there's paint there. Um, but it's too wet. I can't rub it. So what I try and do, one, I make sure they're not too dark before I start painting. Two, if I've get, got a pencil line and I can't get rid of it and it looks awful, I will use an eradicator brush, which I've lost, here it is, something like this. And I can rub over the pencil line, which will take it off with a bit of water, but that will also take a little bit of paint off. So then I have to do a bit of patchwork. So that's as a last resort. If it's, if it's there and I hate it, I can't get rid of it, I'll rub over it with this brush and that will get rid of it for me. But I have to patch, patch where I rubbed. Um, most of the time, if there's pencil marks still showing, I embrace it. It's part of watercolour. So I wouldn't be too concerned about it. And a question about the hairdryer. Do you normally use a hairdryer or only for tutorials? Always, always use a hairdryer. Always. Because somebody asked uh, a little bit earlier on, uh, or they've mentioned every time they use the hairdryer, their colours go pale. Is that just because they're drying out? No, that's your, the watercolour does go lighter as, when it's dry. Always goes lighter when it's dry. So if you think it looks right when you put it on, when it's dry, you'll come back to it and it it will be quite a lot lighter. It's not the hairdryer that's doing that. It's just that the paint dries. Um, it'll dry like that without the hairdryer. I'm just going to quickly put the hairdryer on again too, Dom, sorry. Yeah. All right, that's dry. Let me see if I can remove that pencil line. Did you set your uh, hair dry on a light heat? Um, no, it's up high. See, I've re reduced it a little bit, but you can still see it. The one, one thing you watch when you use a hair dryer is that your paint's not too wet. If it's really wet and you put the hair dryer on, you risk the paint going everywhere, which I've done, I cannot tell you how many times. So wait till it's starting to dry and then dry it off on a low setting. And then when it's nearly dry, give it a blast on the highest setting. And then that allows you to keep working. It sets the paint. I can keep layering over the top of it then. Okay. Um, I'll go back to the little eye. That's dry. I'm going to use a waterproof black ink pen to draw in the pupil. It's easier than me trying to get a beautiful round circle with the paint, especially when I'm nervous. So these are archival, so I find them when it's a small bird, it's easier for me to just do this. If it's a bigger bird, like an owl or something like that, and I've got big eyes, I'll use paint. And 
yes, I am still nervous. I'm just going to give a shout out to Vicky because she snuck out of her husband's retirement party to watch you, Louise. Are you kidding? Now she has to sneak back in. <laughs> Thank you, Vicky. Thanks, Vicky. And Millie said she doesn't want you to do landscapes. That's why she follows you. Oh, okay. Well, as I said, I'll never say never. But we'll see what happens. Um, I can... Kirsten can't keep her eyes open, so she said good night. Oh, good night, Kirsten. Sweet dreams. My pencil here. I can tidy up the shape of that eye with that. So that's a pencil line I don't want to remove. Okay. And Millie's also asked, and I'm going to um, paraphrase here, because she says, do you want to kill me for suggesting this? Sorry? Do you want to kill me for, for suggesting the live stream? Or when are you going to kill me? <laughs> oh, to kill you? Yep. Oh, uh, dear. I'm just wetting that now, that red area, because I want to put a um, little bit darker colour. So, again, I'll use the Pyrrhal Orange and the Burnt Sienna, but it'll have a bit more pigment this time, less water. So it'll be darker for me. I think that's dried since I've shown you that. Just wet it again. Say good night to Nanette as well. Good night, Nanette. Thank you for coming. Do you have any books for sale? Uh, no. I, had, I did do a, a co-authored a book once, um, a few years ago, a Walter Foster book. Um, the, I think it's called The Art, what is it? The Painting Sea Life in Watercolour or something. I contributed to that book, but I don't have one of my own something I'd like to do one day. See, now that's dry there where I've got that. So a little bit of water now and I can spread it around. It's, it's drying very quickly today. We've got the air conditioner on in here, that could be why. Pikachu has said, uh, Louise, when I wet, Past the areas I'm going to paint, I find I get edges where the water stops, even when the second layer of paint does not reach them. Um, that's, yeah, I do too sometimes. That happens to me um, sometimes when you're not watching. Like, for instance, here I've got a bit of a water line. Um, what you can do when that happens is if it's dry and you come back and you think, oh, damn, I've got a water line there. Again, wet your brush, clean water, and you can probably remove it with a clean brush. Just, that's what I do. Um, try and keep an eye on it as it's drying and you'll see them forming. And if you can get onto them when they're damp, um, you can wipe them away. But sometimes it happens and you come back to it when it's dry and you think, oh, I didn't see that before. But a damp brush will get it off for you. And Monica's asked, do you dab your brush on the, on the cloth each time you pick up more colour? Um, yeah, I do dab my, cloth, my brush a lot, I have to say. I don't sort of take much notice. I do it automatically without thinking. Um, I do, my, my, by the time I've finished a painting, my cloth is quite wet. I'll show you this one. I don't know whether you can see how wet it is. So, did, did that show up all right? Did you see that all right? Sorry, I wasn't looking. Oh. Um, yeah, I do wipe it a lot. I'll paint in that bottom beak now. Am I still centred on the screen? I can't see the screen, so Don's got to check that for me. And he's not listening to me. I 
Am I still centred on the screen? Yeah, all good. Yeah? This is the same colour I used here. It's pearl orange with a touch of burnt sienna in it. Okay, there's a little nostril just here, so I'll put that in with some sepia. Just to give the indication of it. Okay, now what? Um, I might come down the bottom here. This area needs a bit more work. So that's water. I'll get some... What will I use? I might use Windsor Violet here. Liz, do you recommend lifting the wet paint to create the highlight? Um, yeah, I do that sometimes. Yep, definitely. You need to wait until it's um, starting to dry, though. I tend to be a bit quick when I do that. Um, this is a little bit of grey here. Make a mark you don't like, use a wet brush to take it off. Is someone asking about line drawings? A few people have asked about line drawings and how you get them onto the paper, or do you use an app? Well, I talked about how I got them onto the paper before. With the, I put it onto a piece and then I rub over the back of it with the graphite and then I trace over it. Um, sometimes I'll draw, if I'm in the mood for drawing, I'll draw from my reference photo. Other times I might trace the reference photo and then get the basic shapes that I need and then I'll use my, you know, do it by hand to get, to get all the big bits and pieces that I, I didn't manage to get when I traced it. I might change a few things. And that's just tracing off a window or light box, yep. is that right? Yep. Either a light box or a window. I don't have any apps. I don't use any apps. If anyone does and has any recommendations, let, just let them know in the chat. I'm putting a bit of grey here just to break up this area of brown. Janet's watching from London, North Victoria. Oh, hi Janet. And Debbie from Arkansas, USA. Hi, Debbie. Love watching your work. Thanks, Debbie. Um, okay. For your eye there, is it still the size 8 you're using? For which? The eye. The eye, yes. Oh, no, no, sorry. It was the number 5 I used for the brown part of the eye. Um, I'll get a little bit of colour on this one here at the back. I think I'm going to need a nano nap after this. This is grey that I mixed again, the burnt sienna mixed with French Ultra. I can paint this on dry paper because it's just a simple little feather. I'm not going to fuss with it too much. But what I'll do when I get down the bottom here 
is I'll make it look like there's some little white jagged feathers in front of it. Like that. There's a question for me, but partly for you too, Louise. What made us choose YouTube for our live stream? And for me, it was for, I think, the ease of use because um, it's so easy to set up and do from YouTube, uh, notwithstanding the tech issues we had here at home. Um, but for Louise, it was mainly because she hadn't done a video for a few weeks since before Christmas. Is that right? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm not aware of any other. Um, you know, I'm not really a techie person, so I'll leave that up to you, I guess. I've just, you might have seen me just take my brush and paint over that once I'd put the paint down. I got water on my brush and I put a bit of water there because it was a bit flat looking and I wanted the paper to show through again. Here I'm just putting a bit of water. I'm going to get some sepia. Yeah, I just had to go to bed too, it's too late. Oh. And Millie's asked, is it a plastic palette? Yes, it is plastic. I prefer ceramic, but I don't have a ceramic one, a big one. Okay, now I'm going to create some little jagged feathers. I'll draw them in so you can see what I'm doing. So what I'll do is I'll wet... Oh, I'm just looking for my brush. I'll wet the left hand side. So just here, of my pencil line. I usually do them freehand, but I thought I'd draw them in so you can see what I'm doing more. So what I want, I want hard edges along here, but I want over here to be soft edges. So I'll use, what colour will I use? I think I'll use sepia again. So this is sepia. So Louise, do you, um, do you do your line drawing after you stretch your paper? Um, usually. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be. You can put it on first and then put, stretch your paper. Um, I find if I put it on first and then soak the paper, that the graphite is harder to remove though. Um, when you want to rub it out. It might be a little bit more difficult if you've soaked your paper. So I tend to I tend to put it on after I've stretched it. But you don't have to. And do you ever use gouache? Uh, sometimes, yeah. When I if I want to paint any little um, little flicks, I don't use gouache to paint a whole painting. I'll use it to enhance the watercolour if I need to. It's good, the gouache is good for covering over any mistakes that you might make. If you've made a, an awful mistake, um, sometimes you can get some gouache and it'll repair it for you. But generally not a lot and I don't paint entire paintings with it. I'm using my little eradicator brush now just to show you how you can remove a bit of paint. If you use it wet with your, with your paper dry, um, then you use a tissue to take the paint off. You can see I'm having trouble talking. Someone's asked, can you use a hairdryer when you do some of your background techniques like the cling, cling film technique you show us with the elephant? No, not with that. 
that needs to dry on its own naturally. So you put the, you put the cling, wrap on, cling wrap on when it's wet and then you have to leave it to dry by itself. Do you ever have anxiety while painting? I think oh. she has anxiety right now. <laughs> Absolutely. Every painting, every single painting is a struggle. That was merely... No, it's not easy. This, this is not easy. So um, don't, don't be hard on yourself because every single painting that I do is a struggle for me. And I'm filled with anxiety with every new painting. I just want to put a bit more colour on the head. I don't have enough colour. It looks a bit wishy-washy to me. So I've got a bit more Van Dyke brown. And Patricia's asked, how do you decide the process of your painting or painting a picture? Um, you know, how do you break it down in your head? Um, that's a good question. I, I tend to... Lately I've been doing a lot of studies, colour studies. I do a graphite study, which helps me work out colour values. It also helps me... Not, not colour values. helps me work out values. Um, it also helps me to simplify the reference photo and get rid of the stuff I don't need. Um, from there, I'll do a colour study. And that helps me a lot. Prior to that, I used to sit and paint the painting in my head before I painted it. So I used to sit there and think, how would I, how would I do this area? How would I paint that area? If I can't work out in my head how I would paint it, I usually don't try, I don't bother. I'll pick another reference photo. There's a lot of good questions coming in, Louise. Um, Dom, question for you. I'm going my brush on a tissue to remove some water so it won't flood the paper. They also tend to lose pigment. Recommendations. Uh, okay, yep. I can talk about that. Just concentrating, hang on. That's a bit of CPR. Just going to spread it out now. My brush doesn't have any paint on it. It's just damp. I just didn't like that straight line along there. I just wanted to break it up a bit. Tell me that again, that question. So, a question please. When I dab my brush on a tissue to remove some water so it won't flood the paper, I also yep. tend to lose some pigment as well. Recommendations please. Okay, that's easy. Let me show you. Tissue. We'll get some paint. It's fully... Speak up a bit. Pardon? Speak up a bit. Am I a bit soft? Yeah. I've got some paint, fully loaded. Now, if I want to dab my, cloth, my brush and I don't want to lose my paint, I dab the side. Take some paint off, but my t the tip of my brush, where I'll be painting from, still has paint on it, if that makes sense. So instead of, instead of just wiping it and then trying to paint, all my paint's gone. So I'll load the brush up and I, you know, I'm careful. That gets rid of a bit of moisture that's in the brush, but it still gives me paint doesn't take all the paint off. So that's usually what I do. If, if I'm worried about taking all my paint off. And the next question, is there a trick to painting negati negatively to get feathers to appear natural? I cannot get the dark grey feathers on the wren to look right. Is there a trick to painting negatively? You mean here? That's, um, that's just practice. There's no real trick to it, it's just practice and it's, it's very hard to paint in the style of somebody else as well. This is my style of painting. If you're trying to copy me, um, you might have a different style of painting and it's very hard to make yours look like mine. So 
yeah, I don't know what else to say. Just it's just practice, um, and at the same time, try and develop your own little style of painting. Use what I tell you as a guide, but um, try to do your own thing with it if you can, I guess. It's a hell of a combination. Hi, combination. It's John. <laughs> He's my brother-in-law. Hi, John. And uh, Patty says you're doing great. Who did? Patty. Patty, thanks, Patty. And um, Rebecca's asked, what's the difference between using an eradicator brush or a silver scrubber brush? Um, the silver scr scrubber brushes are very stiff and they will damage your paper if you're not careful with them. Uh, sometimes those little eradicator brushes just aren't strong enough, they're too soft. So then I might have no choice but to use the silver scrubber. But I've only, I'll only use the silver scrubber if I'm using ash paper. I've found that it has damaged Fabriano paper. Um, so yeah. I use them occasionally, but not often. And Michelle says not to kill me. Not to kill you. I'll try not to. This is sepia that I'm using. I'm painting it fairly watery on dry paper. Um, Yeah, what have I got there? Another little, I think that's still slightly wet. So I'll leave that. Down here, I'm going to use some Payne's Grey along here. deepen that colour. So what I do when I want to deepen the colour, I just use this paint here, which is watery. If I want it darker, I'll wipe my brush over the paint that's gone hard and I'll load it up with that. And then I can come back here. As long as the paper's wet, I can paint a bit of that darker colour on there. Now I'm taking the paint out of my brush. It's just damp, there's nothing on it. And I can spread that dark pigment out. Sometimes when I do that, I might put that on a bit too, too dark and once it's dry, I'll come back and I look at it and I think, oh no, I've gone too dark there. So then all you have to do is wet it again and then just dab it with the tissue to take a bit of paint off. Uh, Karen says, thank you, Dom, you're a great husband. He is, he's a sweetheart. He's a keeper, Karen. But only when he's not in trouble. Yep. This is sepia. My paper is dry where I'm painting. I'm just painting those little feathers that sit underneath those little spiky ones. Okay, I've got to wait till the paint's grey dries before I do any more work here. I can get these little, little, little wing feathers in here. So that's paint's grey there. I'll use that there as well. Again, I'll pull it in to create some little jagged, jagged feathers. And that is practice. That's all that is, it's practice. You could practice on a piece of scrap, scrap paper if you want to try that technique. 
um, just put some paint down and then practice flicking it to try and create some natural feather shapes. Just keep practicing that until you get something that, you know, looks like feathers. And that's all I'm doing here. Okay. Louise, what camera do you use to take photos? Uh, I use my iPad. Oh, sorry, my iPhone. What is it, an iPhone 11? What have I got? Don't you use the Canon as well? Very rarely. So you mostly on iPhone. If, if I want photos of birds... I'll go outside with my big camera, but if I'm taking photos of my paintings or photos of flowers or things like that, I'll use my iPhone. I've got a big um, Canon, what, do I, what is it, my camera? The big one? The Canon D50, isn't it? Something like that. It's got a, re I've got a really, big lens and I can go out in the garden. It's 600 millimeter lens, so you can get a quite a good zoom. Yeah, I go out in the garden and sit quietly and wait for the birds. Um, and can you please try and do a blooper because everyone loves your bloopers. <laughs> I think I did a blooper before, didn't I? That's funny. Oh, you should see me some days trying to get, you know, the words out. I'll just put a bit of Van Dyke brown there. I'll put a bit there. I had a white patch. I don't know what I was doing there. Okay. Um, I might just add a little bit more detail to this area here, the little fluffy bum feathers. I want to do that on wet paper, but I need to wait a little while because I don't want this paint to spread as much as it has there. I want it to sit more and more where I put it. So I need to give that a minute or so or two or three until the sheen starts to go off the surface of the paper. And then I'll paint on it when it's damp. You got any questions, Dominic? Louise, how do you decide which part of the bird should be cooler or warmer in colour? Uh, well, usually I, I use the reference photo to guide me. If, um, if it's in shadow, it's usually cooler because you want those areas to go back. Cool colours recede whereas warm colours advance. So this area here is further back than this area here. So I've made this cool and this warm, which will bring those ones forward, hopefully. That's the idea. Here, this area of the bird is further back than, than this area here. So I've made it cool there. So, but I'm usually guided by the reference photo. Yeah, someone's also asked, about your um, reference photo. Can you show your iPads? So you're looking at that as well sometimes? Here, now, today? Yeah. Um, there it is here. So you can see it's cooler here. I haven't taken that colour all the way down there because I want a soft edge here. So I follow the reference photo as much as I want to and then I will do my own thing with it as well. Sometimes I put the reference photo away and I won't use it at all. I'll, I get to a certain stage of the painting and, and I'm no longer looking at the reference photo. I'm looking for areas where I can improve it or areas that don't look quite right. Um, I think that's pretty good now. So I'll use the grey again. Let's see if I can...
So that's a stamp. It's not spreading like it did before, but it's still giving me those soft edges, which is what I want. Sometimes I'll wet the paper and I know that I want to work on damp paper, so I have to let it start to dry. And then I'll go working somewhere else and I'll come back to it and I think, oh, I forgot about it. I've got to wet it again. Louise, can you give a shout out to Galaxy Teddy Bear? I've been painting for arm um, from age five until age 10. I'm 10, you know. Oh, what a sweetheart. So what's her name? Gal Galaxy Teddy Bear? Yes. Hello, Galaxy Teddy Bear. That's wonderful that you're painting from such a young age. Um, I'm just going to darken this one a little bit. Question about overworking. What makes your painting overworked? Your hummingbird was gorgeous. What makes it overworked and not realistic? Oh, when you try too hard, I think. Um, if I'm struggling with a painting, trying to make it work, I struggle, 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 and no matter what I do, I can't get it to work. Um, it'll end up looking overworked, and you'll actually see that I struggled with it. Um, yeah, I think watercolour is such a, a fluid, quick medium that if you fuss with it too much, um, it shows that you're fussed with it too much and then your work looks, looks overworked. Or if you try to add too much detail, I find when I used to try and paint everything that I saw, um, yeah, it starts to look overworked. I look back on some of my earlier paintings that I did, I don't know, five or six years ago and I think, whoa, that's so overworked. At the time, I thought it was beautiful but now I can see that it's overworked. And Galaxy Teddy Bear is having a hard time staying awake. It's 6.30 a.m. and very dark outside and the temperature is four degrees. It's cold. Oh dear. Have to get a blanket. And someone's asked about um, what has, how do you flatten paper if it gets a bit wobbly after it's taken off? Uh, I will, generally I, I always stretch my paper so I don't really have that problem but um, you can wet the back of your painting with water, paint some water over the back of it, sandwich it between some foam core or something like that and put some really heavy weights on it for a couple of days. I've never tried that myself but I hear that it works. Other people might like to chime in and tell you know, others what they do. And I know you're very scared of it because you didn't want to, you wouldn't want to do that. But lots of people are asking you to do just a live Q and A session. Ah. Eek. What sort of liner brush do you use? Um, See, she. By the way, I noticed people. She didn't want to answer that question. Yes. <laughs> she went quiet. Uh, I still use my Da Vinci Maestros. They come quite small. This is a double, double zero. So I usually use that little fella if I want something, if I need something really fine. Um, that one's dirty, I need to clean it. And are the brushes you're using difficult for beginners to use? That's a good question. I'm not sure, to be honest, because I didn't use them when I was a beginner. I used them after about five years of painting. So I used to use synthetic brushes because uh, I couldn't afford the dearer, dearer ones. So I used synthetic. Um, I'm not sure that would be something that a beginner would have to, would have to answer, I guess. If there's any beginners out there that are using these brushes, are they difficult? Here I've got water on the paper and some sepia on my brush and it's not coming off my brush as you can see. Let's try that again. 
I'll just wet my brush, wipe it over the pigment. I'll give it a bit of a squish to make sure I don't put any big globs of paint on there. I'll take off the excess moisture. Let's see if it works now. Here I don't want to paint perfect lines. I just want to give the um, suggestion that there's some feathers broken up there. I hate everything looking perfectly neat. Nicole has asked tips on sketching. I love painting, but sketching stops me. Can you use tracing paper or is that cheating? No, it's not cheating. No, go, go for it. If you love painting and not drawing. I mean, drawing is important. And I must say that or I'll get into trouble. Drawing is very important. Um, so it's worth spending some time drawing, but um, there's nothing wrong with using other tools to achieve what you need to achieve. All right, I'm going to come back later when that's dry. I'm nearly finished. Not long now, guys. Thank you for your patience, those that are still here. On the little feet, I'm going to put the mix of pearl orange and red sienna. Louise, did you go to art school? Thank you, Gina. Um, I did. Well, funny story. I did, I'd enrolled in a, a two-year, it was called a Certificate for Fine Art course. And it, it was a lot of life drawing, painting in acrylic paint, um, what else did we do? We did some sculpture. Sculptures. We did some ceramics. Ceramics, even does. Yeah, and I did, fruit. but I only ended up doing one year of it because on the second year when I went to enrol, the head teacher told us that we wouldn't be having a drawing teacher. That what we were to do was to go to the classroom and just draw together as adults, help ourselves. And the course was $600 or something like that. And I just refused to pay another $600 for a class that I wasn't going to have a teacher for. So I only ended up doing one, one year of the two year course. But during that one year, we did an awful lot of uh, life drawing we did, drawing from life which I loved. Just trying to break up this area here with a bit of sepia. So, and art has always been a part of my life. Even when I, when I was in high school, it was my favorite subject. And um, yeah, it's just something I've always done. Am I speaking loud enough? Yeah. Okay, um, I'll just put a little bit of colour on these little wing feathers. This is sepia, it's on dry paper. Somebody's asked, do you always use tubes or do you use watercolour pans as well? No, I generally use tubes. I do have some pans, but I rarely get them out. Nothing wrong with them, you know, I just, I just, pans and uh, tubes are my preference. Um, actually, I might paint the branch before I paint that foot because I'm likely to get some paint on it. So I'll just do that quickly now. Um, While you're doing that, mm -hmm. Curry's asked, um, do we get to meet you, Dom? And hello. 
I'm sitting on the side over here and Louise is over in this direction over here. Some water on the branch. I do it in sections. I'm not going to wet over here yet because it'll dry before I get to it. When I paint my branches, I try not to fuss with them too much. The subject of my painting is the bird. I don't want all the eyes to go to the branch. So I try to paint them fairly quickly without much fussing. So that's wet with water. I'll get some grey paint. I also generally use the colours that I've used on the bird, on my branches. I repeat the colours. I find that ties everything in better. This is grey again. May have a bit more friend, um, burnt sienna mixed into it. What I'm doing is forming the shape of it and I'm leaving some white paper showing. I also try to concentrate the colour near the bird and I fade it out further out. So now I've just got water on my brush and I'm spreading that paint out. It's on there. You can even drag it off onto the dry paper. So then, while that's wet, I'll use some of these colours that I used on the bird. So maybe some Van Dyke Brown. Maybe a touch of violet. Well, there's someone's asked a tech question about our, what platform we used for the website. And that was Squarespace we used. Why did we decide to use Squarespace? I don't remember. I think it was a toss-up between Squarespace and Wix. And we went with Squarespace, but I can't remember why. Okay, so now I can work on the next section. When that starts to dry a bit, I might drop a bit of water in there to create some blooms, which breaks that up a bit, make, gives it a bit of texture. How are we going for time, Dominic? Well, it's 12.37, so we're coming up to in okay. 20 minutes will be two hours. All right, well, we'll finish, I'll finish this in, you know, 15 minutes or so. So anybody who's a bit over it, I'm nearly there. And someone's asked that they notice, or it's made in a comment, Northern Birda has said, um, they notice you use your paint straight out of the box rather than mix it. Comments, please. Uh, I use the colours as they are without mixing much. Yeah, I do generally. Um, I'm not much of a mixer, I'll be honest. I think it helps to keep my paintings fairly vibrant as well. I'll mix greens because I'm not fussed on a lot of the greens the, out of the tube. I mix my greys. I'll mix a black. Um, if a colour is, as I did for here, if it's too bright, I'll mix another colour into it to tone it down. But a lot of the mixing I do is on the paper. So, yeah, it's just not, I'm just not, I'm not keen on mixing. It's not something I enjoy doing. I can vouch for that because every time we go to an art shop where she gets art supplies, she just loves picking the colours and spends hours picking them. Mm. No. Now, Louise, yep. a question here, um, that gator board, uh, but someone else, it seems like they've answered that. We've got it from um, Jackson's, wasn't it, in Sydney? Parkers. Parkers. Jackson's is in the UK. My gator board is 18 millimetres thick. Um, I believe you can buy thinner gator board. 
I'm not sure how that would go. I think it would tend to bow like a banana once the paper starts to dry. So. And someone's asked, Judy's asked, what do you think of using 300 pound paper? So that must be 640 GSM. Oh yeah, I absolutely love 600 pound paper. It's my favorite paper to paint on. Um, it's just that it's very, very expensive. So for this, I'm using three, um, sorry, 140 pound. And you don't need to stretch that Gen generally, paper? Generally not, um, but it will get a slight wave in it if you don't if you're going to if you're going to work really wet you will get a slight wave in the 640 gsm paper so i work quite wet so i generally stretch mine before i use it here i'm just going to take a bit of paint out onto the dry paper So over here I've dropped some watercolour blooms, uh, some watercolour to create those little blooms, which adds a bit of texture. Don't know whether I need them anywhere else. I think that'll do. Now I have to turn the dryer on again. I'm sorry, I've got to dry that so I can paint that little leg in. Can you mute it? Okay. What's your favourite colour, Louise, from the colour family? Like your favourite blue or greens? Oh. Um, I think French Ultramarine is the blue I use the most. Uh, I like Antwerp blue. I've just discovered Antwerp blue. I like that. Greens, again, I tend to mix them, but I, of, of all of the greens, that come out of the tube, sap, permanent sap green would be the one I buy. Um, I use a lot of Windsor lemon. Uh, Scarlet Lake is a red that I like from Windsor and Newton. What else? I use a lot of Windsor violet as well. This is Pyrrhal orange with some burnt sienna mixed into it to tone it down so that it's not so bright. Just to make it a bit more earthy looking. I would paint, probably paint a bit slower uh, if I was doing this with nobody watching. I'm trying to do it as quickly as I can with all you guys watching me. Kelly said Teddy Bear's happy that we shouted out to her. Oh, that's nice. Or him. Sorry, Galaxy. <laughs> Could be a him. And um, Louise, Anne has asked the question, Louise, can you recommend a course where I can learn drawing, maybe from Skillshare? Because there are so many that I don't know which to choose from. Have you any experience uh, with those? No, I've never looked, to be honest. Never looked myself. There is a book you can buy that I have here called drawing on the right side of your brain, I think. I think that's what it's called. Um, it's, it's a good book if you want to try and teach yourself. I find when you're learning to draw, if you turn your reference photo or whatever it is you're using upside down and then draw upside down as well, turn your paper around so that it's upside down as well, you have to draw what it is you see, not what you think you see. Um, and again, it just takes lots and lots and lots of practice. 
I've just dropped a little bit of Windsor Violet on there to break up that, that orange. It was, I probably should have waited until it dried and then re-wet it and put the violet on. But as I said, I'm in a bit of a hurry, so I'm just um, taking shortcuts. And that, I might do that in a um, little bit of violet. I've put the orange on there and I didn't mean to. I might make that violet, which will push it back a bit. And Susan, yes, I'm the one getting coffee when Louise is painting or more likely when she's doing her face to camera. Yeah, we share this office that we're in now. And because of COVID, he's been home from work all year, all, all of last year. So it was a bit tricky, wasn't it? That was a bit of Payne's Grey. I'm all over the place with these um, claws. It's because I'm talking. So I'm putting a bit of violet on there. Louise, I think you're going to have to do one because Galaxy Teddy Bear we really wants you to do a live QA, pretty please, with lots of hearts and pluses. There's a shadow that I want to put on the branch. So I'm going to wet it. This helps to attach the bird to the branch. So I'll wet it. Mila said she's glad you don't mix colours because she almost had a heart attack when you mixed grey. Oh. Yeah, I usually mix my greys. Some people have a bit of a problem when they mix colours and they worry that the paint separates when they put it on the paper. And it does, it separates. You can see mine has separated here. You can see um, a bit of the burnt sienna. But that is the beauty of watercolour. So I would not panic about that. I would embrace that and just enjoy Enjoy the happy surprises that it gives you. Sometimes, you know, it does things. I think, oh, I didn't mean to do that, but gee, that looks great. So don't, don't be concerned if you mix a colour, you put it on the paper and it separates. Okay, so that's a bit of Windsor Violet on the wet paper. Tegan Thorne has, has said, um, please don't forget to tell us about the larger tail feathers. Yes, I will. Don't, will you remind me, Dom? As soon as I've finished painting, I'll tell them that. Windsor Violet again. I used Windsor Violet on the bird, so I thought it'd be nice to use it down here. I could use Payne's Grey. I could use a darker mix of burnt sienna and French ultramarine but I tend to play around with colours a bit. I don't see purple on the reference photo, um, but I know that it works for me, so I'll use it. There's a shadow just here too. Jo says, hi Louise, you were a teacher. What grade did you teach? I taught all from kindergarten up to year six, grade six. So primary, we call it, <coughs> excuse me, we call it primary over here. I think you call it elementary in the US. So I was it from a kindergarten to year six teacher. And my kids, my students, uh, their favourite subject that they did with me was take a guess. They used to love doing art with me. My classrooms were always packed to the rafters with artwork, their artwork that they did. Okay. Um, 
might just put a little bit of mince violet on this leg. This is what I should have done to this one, but I was being a bit hasty. Winds of Violet, just to cool it down a bit in the shadows. Now, I think I'm pretty much there now. You can, I can if I want to maybe make my background a bit more interesting. Is that, can you still see that on screen? Because I've just moved it. Which bit? Yeah, I'll my, just remove the reference photo. My board. Yep. Just to be a clean water. Now my other water that I've been using to dip my brush in is dirty. So I've got a second container and that's what I'm dipping, that's what I use now. I've got clean water that I haven't, haven't touched yet. I'm just going to use a bit of the grey that I've used here. So that was French ultramarine mixed with um, burnt sienna. And I've just picked up a bit of Windsor Violet accidentally. So Louise, Galaxy Teddy Bear said by drawing upside down, what will happen? Other than us being in Australia, as Tra Tracy says that because um, we're upside down, we have to draw upside down in, in Australia. <laughs> is that Tracy? Tracy from Port Macquarie, Tracy? Yes, it is. Oh, really? Hello, Tracy. Um, no, it just means that you're drawing what you see, not what you think you see when you draw upside down. So sometimes we get caught, your mind gets caught in the, um, the left brain mode where you're painting what you think you see rather than what the eye is actually seeing. And when you turn it upside down, then it becomes an abstract thing. It's not what you thought it was anymore. It's just different shapes. So, and then you should be able to paint an entire drawing upside down if you're painting, if you're drawing properly. So I've just put a bit of, the, I've repeated the grey that I used on the bird here on the, on the side. So I think I'm pretty much there as much as I want to do. I mean, I might fiddle with that a bit more and put a few little bits of darker colour here and there, but it's close to being finished. The tail here, I did... I wet this first one with water and I put some of the grey, this grey that I just used, French Ultramarine and Burnt Sienna. Um, I left the white paper showing here. When that was dry, I painted the next one in with, uh, I think that's Van Dyke Brown. Then I painted the next one with Van Dyke Brown. And then when it was all dry, I wet it these down here and I used sepia and this bit here is sepia as well and I painted that on wet paper once this was dry. Um, now by the way Millie is a girl so thank you Millie. Oh okay. Hi and, Millie. And um, Susan said she says we should have a live stream every week. Oh my god I think I'd have a heart attack. But Millie says introverts don't do Q&A. <laughs> Yes, I am a bit of an introvert. I'm very shy, actually. I may not come across as being shy, but I am. And just to confirm that once this live stream is over, we will save it and you will be able to see it forever. Yeah, and you can paint it yourself. I've just put a bit of sepia on that area, on the dry paper. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm going to leave it at that. I I'll just want to show you another painting that I'll be making a tutorial of, well, for Patreon and also YouTube next week. Oh, that reminds me, someone earlier on asked, and I forgot to ask you about portraits. Oh, okay. This little one here will be on YouTube next week, uh, little bits and pieces of it. 
and then I'll make a full length tutorial for Patreon. So that's coming up next week. Um, what was the question about portraits? Oh, that was to show that one. So I just remembered. So someone asked, that, are you going to do more portraits? Mm -hmm. I am. <clears throat> Excuse me, I just had a drink. I am learning. I'm teaching myself to paint portraits in watercolour. Not easy. I have painted one in monochrome. Actually, you could probably show them. It's in that cupboard over there if you want to walk over to it. Um, I thought it would be easier to paint a... No, the next one. I thought it would be easier to paint a face in monochrome, meaning one colour, and just focus on the values and the shapes rather than paint... Oh, it might be on top, Dom, sorry. Oh, have you got it? Rather than worry about colour as well as shapes and values. Hold it up to the screen. Which? Oh, am I on here? Yeah, yeah. Can they still see here? Yeah. I'll show you down here. So I did this pink one um, as a practice for myself and then I had a go doing the green one and I filmed all of the green one. So that will be a tutorial on Patreon over the next few months, as soon as I get it finished. So once, once I've done a few more of these, um, I will practice doing them in, with proper skin colour so that I can learn how to do that. It's a slow process. I'm not going to rush it. I'm going to take my time. Um, I also did a profile because I thought, right, I only have to deal with one eye, not two. Um, so I think this will be a good exercise for people who are wanting to learn how to paint portraits because I myself am learning. So that's coming up as well. Louise, someone asked, um, Susan asked, how did you start doing backgrounds that terrify me? They ter used to terrify me too. I didn't do them for many, many years. Um, but it probably took me... I started painting them about two years ago. So I was, I avoided painting them for about nine years. Uh, now I find I enjoy painting them. I don't like to fill in the entire background. I like to see some white paper. Maybe as I evolve, maybe as I evolve, I might start to fill in the entire background. But for now, I'm just happy doing these little splashes and um, sometimes I'll do them on wet paper. Other times I'll do a big bold splash on dry paper. Um, do yeah, do, do that when you're ready. Don't rush. Don't feel bad if you haven't done a background. It's not, it's not necessary. You can paint things without backgrounds. Uh, can you just mention where the outline is? Julie Ash has asked. It's on Patreon. The link should be on the description. And DK99 said, doing this live surely must save you all that editing time. Maybe you'll do it again. <laughs> it does save me a lot of editing time, but oh boy, it was stressful leading up to it, wasn't it? It was because we had a few issues with um, the camera oh, and night. the audio not syncing and uh, we finally fixed it. I was ready to tell everybody we couldn't do it last night. Yeah. Um, so is that about it? Deb asks, it works great also. If you don't have Van Dyke Brown, what would you mix if you know? Um, good question. I was looking at that last night. I think Daniel Smith's Burnt Umber is pretty close. So... I wouldn't know how to mix it though. You, um, you, you use three primaries, but I've never tried to mix it myself. So it doesn't have to be Van Dyke Brown. Um, as I said, Daniel Smith's Burnt Umber is pretty close to that. Is that it? I'm about five minutes behind in the chat and catching up. I'm always catching up. Um, I can tell you're shy. Gina says, I can tell you're shy. That's why your bloopers are so cute. You did very well. It'd be easier next time. Oh, thank you. 
Um, Louise, you're so brave to do this, being an introvert. Amazing, really, really uh, enjoy this. That was Anne. Um, Louise loves the jacket one. Great name, Louise. <laughs> Thank you so much for giving your time, Louise. It's been fabulous. Uh, da -da -da -da. You did awesome. Thank you so much for live. Thank you also, Dom. Um, I'd love to have a pelican. I think you yes, have a pelican, don't yes. you? Yes, no, I've, I've got it on my list. It's on my list. Uh, and Becca, who agrees, she would love to see a, see a tutorial of a pelican. Okay. Um, you better give a shout out to, uh, to Teddy Bear. Is Teddy Bear still there? I think so. Is it morning or night there? Uh, it was 6.30 when she got up to start. In the morning? In the morning. Oh, time for breakfast. <laughs> time for breakfast. Nice warm breakfast. Um, yeah, Do so... Do wind up then? Yep. So thank you everybody for watching. Uh, I was nervous. I still am nervous. The nerves are still here. Um, I probably, as I said, I will fiddle with that a little bit more maybe and then I'll take a photo of it and I'll put it on Patreon for you so that you can have a go at painting it yourself. Um, thank you for watching and don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel and I will see you next week with the jacket. So thanks for watching everybody. Bye.